My name is Matt. I'm the founder of Somatic Consent and the Somatic Consent Academy. And I will show you a few things that related to this dynamics that we do. This is the monthly Monday meeting from the Academy that is open for people from the Academy to bring friends so that you can see what we do and being part of that. And as well combined uh, as a webinar today about uh, consent, pleasure, um, the healing function of somatic inflow to our nervous system when it comes to sensuality, what kind of weaves in what we do. So welcome to the monthly Monday and to the academy. So what I would like to start first with is with the hands meditation to show you um, the essence, the core exercise of this entire dynamic and we're building the rest of the uh, day or the rest of this meeting what goes about 90 minutes we build on that one and if you have any questions around that in your individual experience how to use that in relationship or in your profession if you put your hands on somebody else's body or need some explanation about how proximity works then this is the place to um, talk about that so i will share my camera I have three different cameras. I just want to show a little bit off because I have so much fun doing that. So you have this camera on me. Then uh, we have a camera here where you see my hands and my book. And uh, so this is showing you a little bit how that works with the hands. And then I let you a little bit more in my uh, kind of office desk <laughs> here in my studio. And uh, so I have, I have a little button here. I just want to show you that here down there. I just push the buttons and then I can switch between the cameras. Yeah, so it's just my little playground. So let's dive in and do the hands meditation first. So um, I invite you to take something in your hand. I have always a little piece of wood here. Can be anything what it is, can be a remote or anything. And the invitation is to just lean back, sit relaxed. Relax your shoulders, relax your arms. And um, okay. And how I start that is that I would like to invite your mind as well so that you use your mind to labeling that object that you have and giving it a purpose what you're using it for what it's made for or made of from it so that your mind can be here as well and satisfied and during this entire time of that meditation, I invite you to choose to keep your eyes open or close your eyes as you like. And while you have that in your hand and you just play around a little bit and just feel it up in your way, you just notice that this object is a little bit cooler or warmer than your skin. So just notice the temperature. And notice the tactile information, the haptic. Is it smooth or is it soft? Is it rough or is it sharp or round? The little bumps on it or curves. So you get a lot of information with your hand when you tap in. But what we're really looking for is a level deeper than that. So when you have that in your hands, then I invite you to slow down your movement by half so that you get really slowly. And sometimes you might even need to stop for a moment. And then start to explore different areas with that object on your hands or with your hand on the object maybe between your fingers, maybe your palms, maybe fingertips, somewhere where it feels 
kind of nice where it feels pleasant maybe even pleasurable and let's move really slowly here and soft gentle and then you find a spot somewhere where it feels pleasant or maybe even pleasurable then I invite you to just stay there like as if you tiggle yourself There's no goal here. There's nowhere to get. And nowhere to go, nothing to get, just to just to feel, to sense with your skin, with your hands. Doesn't mean anything. Just to feel and to sense, just for a moment. You might have done that before and you come in connection with some feelings or with some thoughts. They are all welcome. And the invitation is to bring your attention straight back to the sensation there in your hands, just to feel. some feelings come up, maybe some thoughts or some maybe even judgments or maybe boredom, you know, so that all is welcome. Even though everything that might keeps you away from feeling, just by acknowledging it, by sensing it, noticing it. And the invitation here right now is to just recognize that you are in action towards a felt sense of pleasure in your skin. So you do something to feel, you do something to sense. Just recognize that for a moment. You're in action for yourself here. Okay, and then slow your movement down until they stop. And just stay there just for a moment. And just notice what you notice within yourself. And then in your own speed, in your own time, I invite you to bring your attention back to the screen and um, let's hear from the one of you who would like to share anything that you came aware of that you notice how do you feel now after doing this little hand meditation uh, anything that was coming up that is worth sharing so please unmute yourself and just allow yourself to speak what do you notice 
Yes, please, Jen. I just curiosity because <clears throat> I have this letter open. You know, I was I went up to my arms. I was dragging slowly, lightly, and it was just so pleasurable right here inside my elbow. But on the other arm, so I went to the other arm, nothing. Mm. So just I'm kind of curious about that. Mm. It was a little surprised, you know, why sometimes one area can be so sensitive and at other times just nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. But, so, yeah. Mm. Curious. Thank you. Who else? Yes, Chris. Um, I was wondering um, when you say take the time to to see me, to close the eye, your eyes, and, and so on. Um, are everybody know that? And I can have a lot of pleasure doing that, or I just talk to the to the whole situation and all all you need for that. But I was wondering. Um, how is it, or how can you uh, change that, the fact that sometimes you have a thought and pain in your heart, you know what I mean? You are, you are doing something or appreciating a treat or something you eat or touching something or somebody and you like it really well and you feel a lot and at some point, bang, you have a thought and you are just out of the skin Yes, we can talk about that after. Um, okay. So was that what you noticed that you were in it, you enjoyed it, and then you had a thought and you were slipping off? Yes, good. This is a great noticing. Yes. But I would like to to be able to do that without the thought. That's enough. <laughs> you are here in the right place. <laughs> yeah, thanks for sharing. I've, I've, I've happened to me now, and I really would like to know how do I stop it. <laughs> I, will, I will put that in the back side of my head, and I will come back to that. Thank you. So great noticing. Anybody else with a noticing? in the hands which was very pleasurable and stay there the, the pleasurable point moved mm -hmm. so when I got there it wasn't there and it moved I had always been moving the object you know it was moving the pleasure point mm -hmm. I got there and it went away to another place mm -hmm. it wasn't the same place so and then I had this object which is Castaniana uh -huh. and it's very like Mm -hmm. And I thought I would just like to touch the softness, but I actually love using the spike <laughs> on my skin and to scratch the skin. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was fun. I like it. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? And every noticing is perfect and welcome. So it doesn't have to be a uh, breakthrough. Just the noticing is the, is the exercise. The noticing is the key component of what we're doing. We're training, yes, please, but training the muscle of noticing. Uh, you're still muted, Ajo, please. You need to unmute yourself. Um, I was like noticing how my fingers it feels really good even in there and it's really nice to feel like 
first hold and then do the play. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also on the other side, this opening, you know, I was like, I, I was noticing this like waiting thing there and here comes the thought, you know, can I share this? But it's like really difficult to wait here. And I know when we practice like again practices as women, it's like wait for for the one to open, you know, it's like it was very difficult to just lay there and wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, many well not seeing the thoughts of I share this and then not seeing how beautiful it is, like the softness here and being held and holding. Yeah, so many things. And Thanks. also not seeing a lot of movements in the spine and not in how I could feel my um, pulse yeah. in, in different kind of poses in the spine, mm. not only the heart. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. And yes, you're totally entitled here to share everything that you notice. <laughs> this is totally welcome. So we go really, we go really deep here sometimes. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Anybody else? I, I felt like um, there was a very different experience if I was touching, if I felt like I was touching the object or if I felt like it was touching me. Um, and yeah, but I think um, before at the end of the session, uh, it's very beautiful. This was like a bit more of a like clear idea. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand how it affected my body, but I could feel like a sense of, I suppose it is like me being more in my masculine, like actually touching and what, how that makes me feel or like being with that foot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I feel some arousal as well, Mo like moving in my body. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, going back to the heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit too much, maybe. <laughs> too much? Yeah, so this is what the self uh, judgment or the self uh, regulation tells us. Like, yeah. okay, I can't share that here, and maybe not, and 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 that is yeah. welcome. So, I, I would say this is a level of shame that 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 makes sure that you don't over override your own boundaries let's say it that way yeah yeah yes yes yeah. you're welcome Thank you. okay uh, is there a last person who would like to share your noticing or last two yes please um, i really when i hold an object i just use it i don't uh, notice uh, how I feel, how the object is in my hand, it's just an object, I just use it uh, most of the time. Uh, I only care about how I feel and how the other feels when it is a person or a, or a, an animal or something. So when I touch something with a purpose, I'm, I'm always in between how I feel, how the other feels. So at this, uh, at this meditation, I noticed that I could, uh, I could be there for, for me, mm. you know, I, I didn't have to think about how the other is feeling. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the only the only one alive <laughs> is me there. Mm -hmm. I have all the all the attention in inside inside of me. Um, in my ears it can be here shaky, <laughs> but uh, I feel I feel like um, it's a great exercise to be just for you for some seconds. Yeah. Yeah. feel without uh, thinking yes this is this is a it's 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 a great noticing like christoph said just like how how can i stop the thinking that i actually can stay there you know and um and and that's that's part of the of this exercise or this meditation is what we do is when we 
practice that regularly, we activating a certain pathway in our in our head in our nervous system that is going from the thinking process into the noticing process. So what we do is literally when we do that for a certain amount of time, we start to train that muscle of noticing what we notice. And when we do that for a while, we might come in connection with something because it is related to our feeling center. That we come in connection with feelings that we don't want to have. And before we actually go into feeling what we don't want to feel because there is sometimes resistance in us, we go straight back into thinking. <laughs> so it's the confrontation of allowing gradually and step by step to feel and to sense. And then another part is, and I haven't shared that in this meditation today, but there's, there's a, a saying in there that we have more nerve ending in our hands than anywhere in our body outside except our mouth and our genitals. Yeah. And because there are so many nerve endings in our hands related to a certain part in the brain, the feeling center, that when we start feeling it, we reactivating a pathway, what I call the direct inflow in our nervous system into our, into our brain that is not the rational functionality, it is the noticing functionality that we activate with that. And what I would like you to do for a moment is when you take the object back in your hand and just feeling it for a moment, you might experience that this object is outside of you. So you hold it in your hand yeah, and you notice that your center of awareness is somewhere inside of you and this object that you hold is outside. This is what most people experience. Now I would like you to try a different perspective just for a moment instead of seeing that this object is outside of you, that you are inside of infinite objects. There are gazillion infinite objects around you everywhere. The entire world is one big object where you picked a little piece of it. So this capacity to move and feel is literally the inbuilt mechanism to create a 3D reality and feel the world around us. And just for a few moments, I would like to invite you not to only touch that object in your hands, to so touch the objects around you. So make connection with the world. What is there? And just feel for a moment everything that you would like to feel around you and just for a moment and just just touch everything whatever you want to touch and feel so that you recognize well i am inside of all this amazing things this the entire world is one big object and i'm in there wow i can touch everything i can feel myself on anything i can feel with any part of my body everything around me and make connection with this body with the world just for a moment and then you notice there is infinity there's, there's no ending to that and then how long can we stay in connection with this capacity to feel and to sense so, by saying that, I have many people many times asking me, yes, but where is that exercise going? Why are we doing that? You know, this is just, I, I get that. I've done that now many times. I can feel it. It's good. But now what? What's the, what's the idea? And 
I was just recently in a training on a retreat where uh, I held a, a, a weekend retreat for couples and uh, where I have built up on this exercise how to go into another dynamic and that's the so-called permission dynamic when it comes to all the object out there you know there are not only objects there as well people out there and before you feel and touch another person you need from that person permission and this is in my world the foundation when it comes to relationships that we have given permission and we have received permission when we can feel ourselves to reach out to other people to connect with them yeah and i would like to leave it right there at this point not going much deeper than that and then asking you by opening your mic where is it landing when you hear that what does it what does it do to you does it sound kind of foreign is it strange do you think yeah this is just common or why would i touch somebody and asking for permission just just hearing where you are with that what does it do in you when you hear that So uh, can I ask you a little bit deeper here? Yeah. So when you being touched from somebody just touching your arm when you are in conversation, how does it make you feel? What's the sensation in your body when they touch you without this permission? What's this what's the sensation in your body? What do you There's notice? Tension. There's tension building up in my yeah. body. Yeah. 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 Where in your body do you notice that tension? So what is the what's the um, emotion behind that? What's the what's the emotional expression that you would give that sensation? First thing feels like fear, but maybe that's not that's not really fear. Yeah. It's discomfort. Yeah. Yeah. Is there is there sadness? No. Yes, <laughs> this is what I want to do. Yes, I was just trying to do that. So the important piece, when somebody is touching you and you have not given permission to be touched or felt, the touch, even if it's a pleasant or a, or a, or a nourishing touch, but if your nervous system is not prepared for that and you're being touched against your will, anger is the natural response because it feels like an invasion to your body. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So here comes the thing. We have all, each one of us here, we have all been touched against our will before we could speak when we were very little. Mm. Yeah, this is true for all of us. Even in the best way, our parents or caretaker did that with the best intention to wash us or to dress us or to, you know, whatever they did. But that doesn't mean we always wanted that and each one of us have learned to make it more important what other people do to us than how we feel about it yeah so what is literally the entire consent part of the entire somatic consent work 
you know just we need to have the capacity to give and have permission to touch and being touched yeah we have another question we have a lot of questions yes i love okay. questions um i'm dancing cuban cuban dancing for the most known in salsa and i'm also teaching them and when you ask somebody to dance with you so you are asking dance and when you are teaching um not all people are coming as a couple so basically you have uh, strangers with strangers for the, for the first time or like two weeks or two months two years whatever and my question would be could you define what you mean with permission mm -hmm. because i could imagine that when i put my students together without knowing what i just said now maybe there is no permission but somehow you have to dance and maybe when i ask a person to dance with me they accept that and dance but perhaps they didn't give me the permission without knowing themselves so what is what is the definition for the topic of permission is it's 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 a it's a great question it's a great question so please everybody kind of just like get your ears up I just make sure that I don't overwhelm you with <laughs> knowledge here. Yeah? So the entire structure of somatic consent, I have built that in a, let's say, in a pyramid structure. Yeah? And when you see a pyramid structure from the side, it looks like a triangle. Yeah? And let's say the ground of the pyramid, this is your foundation. That's your capacity to feel and to sense, to use your hands. Yeah? And then you have on top where the pyramid goes together, that's an interpersonal space. And when you come together with a group and you want to dance, it's an interpersonal space of dancing. Yeah? In an interpersonal space where you have um, collective agreements, it's clear when people dance and they have a certain um, protocol, they touch each other in a certain way, right? So you, you in, 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 in social engagements, in, in interpersonal connections, it's not always common. For example, when you meet your family and you just, they come and hug you, even if you don't like the hug, you know, there is an interpersonal protocol how we engage as humans in a way. And the dancing space includes that as well. So I've been in a, um, in a teaching um, in contact improvisation where, the, where a teacher had similar difficulties that some people felt invaded by somebody who wanted to touch somebody um, and the people being touched didn't want to be touched and and so that he said you know in the beginning of the class if you feel like something is not appropriate here then you need to move away when you dance salsa or any other kind of standard dances it just makes it more difficult i guess I imagine. Um, I, uh, was it a hand, Jenny? Yes. OK, one, one second. I'll just finish that sentence and yeah. then I give it to you. So the important piece is here that he learned from me in the consent forms to say that everybody in the room is giving permission from other people to be touched during contact impro. And it's your responsibility if you don't like what is happening that you move away. So, so basically you are, you are saying when you are not in a very personal uh, interaction, but more like in a, um, in a defined square with room, like for example the dancing stuff that you know you're coming to dance with a partner, so you have to be okay with being touched. Yes. So, in a personal way, you have to define that, and in a, in a well, in a room square, it is given. And if you don't like it, you can still decide to go away. Yeah, it just it, it needs a kind of an, an an agreement field or a container around that. So talking yeah. about the the uh, couples retreat that I did, the permission part was I initiated the couples to have a conversation with each other to share about. Um, uh, and I did that as, was a, in a demo with my partner to have and give an holistic permission to the other person to touch and being touched 
um, and you take care of your limits if you don't like it. And of course, you can evoke your permission at any time, but that there is no, not an assumed permission between couples, because this is what most people do. They assume that there is a, a permission. What is not always the case, specifically when it comes to this dynamic of sensual touch and pleasure. So this kind of sensual touch and pleasure is extremely healing to the body because it opens up the oxytocin pathway and allows us to feel and to connect. You know, it's a very nourishing and and uh, yeah, caressing experience. But if there is no permission to that, the same experience, like Frederick said that before, when he's getting touched on his arm, when somebody talks to him, you can feel that as an invasion. And if you don't speak your anger as expressing your boundaries and say, stop, don't touch me, we swallow that all the time and get that down and stop expressing that we don't like to be touched because we have all learned what people do to us can be more important than how we feel about that as kids. Yeah? And then we go along to situations and then we, we swallow and obey and not really following up with how our nervous system is actually really responding, what our body is telling us. And this permission piece, if it is not clear, that it cleans that up. Please. also tried contacting frog and the salsa I feel much more comfortable with in the sense that I know that I'm going to be touched but I have a pretty clear sense of where and when I'm going to be touched so yeah. I'm comfortable with it with contact in frog it's much more unpredictable it it gives you a lot more uh, responsibility to defend your boundaries um, and it's that, I think that's a learning process, you know, how to navigate that um, within the dance. Not only who are you going to dance with, but yes, this, not that. And how do you communicate that? Um, mm. yes. yes. But yeah, I, I experienced that. Well, then I tried tango. And tango is a lot, you know, there's a lot more to skin contact um, and that took a little bit of getting used to but I yeah I wasn't too sure about it at first mm. so just just a comment on that like just knowing ahead of time what what you can expect makes a big difference yeah I'm, I'm, I would like to add to that as well when I went to this contact impro class where this facilitator was inviting me to kind of just like to break it down what was going on I went there with the four different dynamics of touch. I'm, I'm not going in there here today, but um, the dynamics is, am I asking people to do something to me or for me? Nope, I'm not doing that. So this dynamic whoosh, out of the window. Does people ask me to do something for them or to them? Nope, whoosh, out of the window. Am I... Um, asking person um, or, or, or am I giving verbally or am I asking verbally permission to people to touch them? Nope, there is, there's not a permission place, but I am giving permission to people to touch me. And so this is the allowance dynamic that is really empowering if we are clear about that, what we allow. And if I'm allowing people to touch me, I'm constantly in the perspective on the position of choice that I can remove that permission at any given moment. And if I don't like what is happening, I either say stop and not an inch further or I move away and that's my responsibility. Please, Siri, and then get. Um, I might have a. Oh gosh, but I think, okay, I'll try. Um, I thought about like how much I, I feel like 
I want to touch and be not as safe with like setting those boundaries and being clear. So then it's always this like, uh, I notice in me like this insecurity of. So, so, so sorry, Steve. You, you you froze and the beginning of your of your uh -huh. sentence didn't came through did you you didn't hear what i said nope okay um <laughs> but do you hear me now yes okay no i feel like um i notice in me this insecurity of actually asking for what i desire when it comes to touching somebody else or asking for what I want because I don't I might not trust um, that people actually respect their own boundaries um, and then like I mean I, I can always work on on, on me on like on, on setting my boundaries and moving away if, if for example I do a lot of contact visualization I might be like that's perfect for me but like when it comes to other situations, um, I notice like people like almost like tiptoeing around it. Like they, like maybe there is a desire, or maybe there isn't, and uh, but people are afraid to ask, and they're afraid to move closer to each other. Mm -hmm. um, despite like I mean, it's a it's this basic human need of of needing closeness, but in a safe way. Um, yeah this is this is so interesting you know when i came in uh in, in 2020 to sweden when corona uh, uh happened um and then uh, people said just like uh we have to go into two meters distance between people and the entire it's a joke and the entire swedish population just like froze in shock now they have to go and f go from 5 meter distance into 2 meter distance mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know this entire dynamics about touch what what first asked in the beginning some uh, so what happens when somebody's touching my arm even when we talk you know this dynamics when i'm when i'm in spain for example or was in brazil a lot you know, they have a complete different social protocol, how they engage with each other. And, um, and, and, and being around that, you know, changes the dynamics. So you just need to have a look how people, how people do that and, and, and engage with, you know, their kind of social engagement and social connection. And, um, and it's, it's, it's all a good to have the antennas open. And when you notice somebody is tiptoeing around you and kind of hesitate and but don't know or you feel then what's the easiest way to do is just either you just ask hey is it okay when i put my arm on you or is it okay or you say hey if you would like to touch me here that's totally fine you can totally touch me yeah 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 getting permission might be like a good way also to open that yes yeah then it might feel less like invasive and like hey, hey can i touch you and if you don't know them uh, enough to like if you don't know if they're good with their boundaries yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Good one. yeah thank you please yes uh, two two things please um, first of all well it would be a couple and we attended matt's uh, couple workshop um was it a month ago and when we were introduced to this concept of permission and boundaries it was so simple but when practicing it I found it opened up uh, an area of permissioning and that permissioning gave security from both sides a safe space to play a safe space to expand and in that security um, I felt a sense of um, warmth and permissions permission is that we outline each other's boundaries. So we would psychically uh, practice that afterwards. And more recently, um, I was introduced to Hilda and we talked at length about that kind of permissioning we would conduct um, in front of her children for the first time. And I feel by discussing it beforehand and during, it was very helpful for that initial introduction. So uh, 
is because, of course, uh, me being introduced to the children at the very first time was a very important time. And to discuss this beforehand, how we were going to conduct ourselves, really, I think, led to a, a very uh, uh, successful meeting, I think you would say. It was a very good time. But I would add to that, um, is that since then, that was only last week, we're now we're in on holiday in Gran Canaria together, just for ourselves. And it's something I've forgotten to do. Uh, and I believe attending this weekly call is a reminder that I can't ride on an assumption that for me to reinstate the fundamentals of commissioning and touching, I don't assume because I'm given the right to base from context as well as Luke. So, so maybe she gave me that room for that commissioning that a week ago we defined or the week before. I can't assume, okay, I have that at commissioning now on holiday. Mm -hmm. For me, I haven't done it. This is a reminder how it's been important for me to do so because, again, it brings in that, that area, that great weight of... Uh, uh, of uh, of safety that I want is so important, mm -hmm. I believe, mm -hmm. in our relationship. Mm -hmm. Can I respond for a minute? Yeah, you know, it's like at the at the orgasmic blueprint couples retreat was just like when I shared that with my partner that I have this holistic permission, yeah, and this holistic permission. Um, gives me the safety that I can reach out and for her the safety to reach out. But as you s said that, um, that goes so quick that we can drop into this area of um, kind of uh, telepathic agreement or uh, assumed permission. And whenever I feel not sure or she doesn't feel sure, the best way is just like having a recheck in or a reassurance and just like, hey, our agreement is still in place here, right? Mm. Just, just simple as it is. Just like, hey, are we still on the same track here with what we do? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, and and then. Uh, yeah, I, it was about what we talked earlier. That it was just a funny thing that I recognized. I don't know if that like that anymore but when I was in Tokyo 1996 or something it was like they don't say hello touching the hand they never touch their like hands of someone on the street or some friends uh, if you want to applause or something but what they did was so funny that they fell asleep on each other on the rail uh, the railway on the, on the metro they were sitting they could sit like on long roads, uh, roads, they were just on each other like that. So it's very interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. Like we would never do that in Sweden, and we, but we are shaking hands, so the, it can be so difficult. Yeah, what the is what, how is like. Yeah. yeah, the cultural difference is, is just like it's 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 stunning, it's astonishing, kind of when you see that in different countries. Yeah, thanks, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, sure. leading into strangers and just sleeping. <laughs> yes, and then waking up just whoops. <laughs> oh, he has to leave. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Someone yeah. else. <laughs> Nick, please. Yeah, a funny story came to my mind, and um, I'm also a little bit excited to share this. <laughs> But I uh, sometimes like to put myself in uncomfortable situations. So um, I like to go, I like to play on sex positive event, events, right? And uh, I had this uh, one event where I was reaching out um, to come closer to female bodies. And uh, I had this thing that I thought I would really like to play with, with a nice uh, female breast. So. Um, so that I there's there was a kind of friend I knew her from from other events and she had this wonderful form press and I was like oh they are looking really good <laughs> and I I was circling around her for at least a day and I felt so like oh yeah I, I should ask her you know I should just 
you know, have the courage to, she can say no, she's been to the concert workshops and, you know, and she was also a lot younger and I had this old, maybe I'm a really old woman pattern going on and all these things circled around my head and uh, it was really hard for me to do that and finally I did and she was like, yes, sure, it's like everybody asked me about my music, <laughs> it just felt so nice, she, she was so used to this. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, she, she let me do that just for, yeah, I asked for 10 minutes and we had, we had, a, yeah, we had a wonderful time laughing and, you know, around that. And, uh, yeah, but that was uh, the whole patterns of, oh, my God, what am I asking for? What does she think? I'm a really old woman. Why am I asking for this judging myself? You know, it was like uh, it, it went on for a day till I, till I managed to ask her. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I would like to guide you in a little exercise. Yeah, all together. Are, are you are you ready for that? Yeah. Yeah. OK. So what we what we have done here with the object, so you feel the object and this is obvious. Everybody has access to that to a degree. So here comes the question. When you touch another person and feel yourself on the other person what is in the way what is the obstacle what would hold you back so touching an object is one thing this thing can't give you permission but what holds you back if you have a person next to you you want to be close to or you are close with your intimate what is the obstacle that you don't touch the other person or what makes it difficult to touch another person and feel yourself on the other person. And as curious what comes into your mind. And, and, and please unmute yourself and just speak it in. That's totally fine. Unmute yourself and uh, am I welcome or do they like this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's okay. Mm-hmm. Am I welcome? Do, do they like that? Yes. If the person can see what you are touching, maybe if the eyes or some movement, uh, you can see the person is just, you know. So they respond, they are kind of just like, if they are kind of just, yeah, oh. just like, like uh, the hands going to bite you, you know, and yeah, yeah. just a bounce thing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the person is just, with the eyes, just, just, just moving a little bit or with the body. Yeah, yeah. Some kind of uh, fear. Yeah, fear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who else? I think for me it would be mostly the fear of being rejected. Yes, fear of being rejected. Yes. Please, Ellen. Well, my right hand touches my left hand. Often they work together on the same project, um, and there's no permission needed. No. But I seek permission when I touch another because I want confirmation of shared consciousness that we both share that that urge, that feeling to be there right then, right now. So that's it's it's um, a social uh, confirmation of shared consciousness. Yes, for for you personally, Alan, if I would ask you. Let's say there would just sit a person next to you and you would like to touch this person's hand and feel their hand like you felt the object. What would be in your awareness an obstacle that would make that difficult for you to feel somebody else's hand sitting next to you? Well, I, I don't think that there's an obstacle. I think that there's only um, confirmation. Mm-hmm. So I, it would be uh, that they feel the same way and would share the experience, the ambiance of being together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's what would mm-hmm. I would seek. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, it could be a very cold and clammy hand. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can I ask a little deeper? Sure. So. If you have a desire to touching somebody else's hand sitting next to you, what would feel difficult for you to do that? 
Is there anything that would feel difficult for you feeding somebody else's hand? Only that there wouldn't be the, the shared um, interest in doing that. Yeah, so, so, so uh, it would hold you back if you don't have the confirmation that there is a um, uh, reciprocity in desire to touching each other's hand. Reciprocity is yes. the key word. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. you know, absent reciprocity, there's no parity. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it's it's parity that, that we share. Yes, I, I, I like that. I like that. And sometimes uh, we need to have the autonomy that is independent from reciprocity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. That was great. Anybody else? If I want, and the more I want, then I'm unlikely to do it because I wouldn't be ready for what I would perceive as a, 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 as a rejection. Mm -hmm. However, if, if I, in a frame of mind, a more healthy frame of mind, if I, 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 I have a preference and I'm ready to accept their saying no, because then that, for me, Okay, so let's let's assume we are all empowered human beings and we are all embodied with this practice and we can all um, uh, touch and feel ourselves and uh, we might have access to asking permission. Um, but maybe not all the time. It just depends on the situation, it depends on the person, depends on so many factors. But the question to you guys is now, why is it difficult for you to ask for what you want? What, what is difficult for you? Why is it difficult for you to ask for what you want? Specifically, wanted to touch somebody else sitting next to you. Why would you not ask if you wanted that? Judgment. Judgment, yes. Can be any judgment, <laughs> or do you have one in specific? Uh, needy, being judged, judged of being needy. Mm -hmm. Being judged, being needy, yes. Oh, <laughs> <of course. laughs> uh -huh. Fear of us. What else? Fear of rejection. Fear of rejection. What else? Maybe sometimes people use it as a as a as a kind of power over other people. Tell me more. Um. If you if you don't ask, if you just touch, and the the other person is getting fear. Um, so 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 that when you don't ask but you do it, that you just gain power over the other person. Okay. Okay. So, 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 so the n not asking for what you want would just like giving up the position of power. Wow. Okay. Well, I haven't seen it from that perspective. Great. And use it again, the same person, you know? Three, yeah, yeah, three yeah, times yeah. Just to, to have the power over another people. I mean, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Like sh shame is a big part also. Mm -hmm. Like if I ask about something, 
and the other person says no, and then I feel ashamed that I wanted to, like I'm ashamed that I asked. Mm -hmm. But go into the future and play out the scenario, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shame is a good thing. Yes. Anybody else can relate to shame? <laughs> Pretty much everybody, I guess. I have that too. Okay, one or two more. Why is it difficult for you to ask for what you want? For me, it's the um, fear of being vulnerable mm -hmm. and not showing what I truly need and desire. Mm -hmm. um, and it also would be like fear of um, making them uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it was also interesting um, this thing about uh, getting the money and get, uh, about taking away somebody's like having power over somebody and that also. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. Gary, please, you were about to unmute yourself. Okay, so let's go into another question. If you don't ask for what you want, what are you doing instead? Please, Jenny. I'm suffering in silence. Oh. Oh. Suffering in silence. Suffering in silence. Per. I think I'm projecting my own things on the other person and trying to please that person doesn't want another alternative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe it has to do with needs. So um, if you would ask somebody, hey, can I touch you? Can I touch your hair? Can I touch your hand? Whatever. Probably the person would uh, ask why. And what do you want? So that's a that's a that's a great question. One of my teachers just said, just like, well, it's not the question what why, it's the question what how. But if if I would just bring that back, if you don't ask for what you want, if you want to touch somebody next to you, and you you really want to touch them, but you don't ask, hey, can I touch you? What are you doing instead if you don't touch them? somebody you should you, you maybe have a need mm -hmm. proximity of, of feeling warm and so you are going to be frustrated you get frustrated yes yes yeah so you just swallow and you're getting yeah that's what i wanted to say yeah 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 yeah, Total yeah. <laughs> yes yeah yeah perfect i guess i would uh, try to create a nice flirty atmosphere uh -huh. and like butterfly around <laughs> a little bit and then maybe try to sense a point where I could come closer <laughs> and, and ask very, very carefully. A little bit. Be baby steps, really baby steps. And then, yeah, I give myself a hard time because I'm afraid of L little bit flirty or a little bit seduction and just like, okay, yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> Teasing. Uh -huh. It's easy, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Maybe I should try to find ways to minimize the risk of being rejected. Yes. Uh -huh. so in a way, like working toward, towards that goal of touching instead of just directly asking. Yes. Yeah. I can see um, when you say what you do instead. I can see this is unconsciously really, mostly I see it later, 
but that parts of me close down and then uh, if I don't follow my impulse parts of me close down and then later I feel uh, sad mm. Mm. that I didn't listen to myself mm. and also in that closing down there is a, a less connection actually mm -hmm. than before the impulse was there so uh, yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's already quarter past eight time is just flipping by and i would like to give you the key component for asking for what you want when it comes to permission yeah the question is may i or can i is it okay if i yeah this is making a request and it ends with a question mark may i touch you may i feel your hand may i have your wallet may i drive your car may i use your bathtub may i may i have permission to do everything to you whenever however i want holistically asking you once and if you feel there is a limit you'd you say stop yeah so the question may i is the key component but here comes the here comes the formula to this request and 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 this is this is the most empowering thing that i can give you here today <laughs> it is spaciousness yeah so what is spaciousness spaciousness is that there is no pressure nobody is forcing Nobody is pushing. You have at any given moment the choice. That is spaciousness. And when you're in spaciousness, there are four different things happening in your system. You need to trust. Wrong, backwards. The first one is you notice what you want. Yeah, and This is what we're doing with the opt. Uh, with the object it's just like we're training that little noticing muscle we just start to notice what's going on there what is it that i need what is it that i want so you need to notice what you want you need to trust what you want you need to value what you want and you need to communicate what you want notice trust value communicate and the communication is may i put my hand on your shoulders may I touch your arm yeah. if if you are on the wanting side if you are on the other side and somebody is doing something to you you do exactly the same thing you need enough space and time to recognize that this is actually not okay what's going on here or it is okay whatever and then you do the same thing. You notice what's going on in your body. You trust if it's okay or not okay, your own impulses. You value that. And then you communicate and you say, hey, it's actually okay that you touch me here. Or I have not heard you asking. Or do you have a request? <laughs> can I help you to make a request? <laughs> or is there anything that you would like I can help you with? So this is the consent dynamic around that. And there's so much more, you know, I, just, I, I love that work. This is, I'm so compassionate about that because it, it opens up the doors into proximity and into connection. But specifically what I love is when this is in place, I like the interpersonal space that comes on top of that. Like what you said, credencing space. And that is, I want that, do you want that too? What is it that we both want? What is it that all involved want? What is it that we want to do together? And that's not permission, that's an invitation. I want that, do you want that too? That is a complete different dynamic, it changes a lot. Okay, that was the kind of uh, consent part and is there any question around that 
and then I change the gears. I'm curious if yes. you're talking spaciousness. Spaciousness. Like, like, to not feel, to not make the other person feel pressure in any way. Is that something also where I would hold back, like fear of making them feel pressured? Yes. Um, there's an... And, and I, I, I don't know if you remember that from the dearmoring training when I did the exercise about saying no. So that we sometimes, you know, we before we can say yes to something, we just need to be capable of saying no first. Some other facilitators see that differently. I like it that way because I need to say no and sometimes I need to find a full yes to my no. And I need to be full capable of expressing my no. And then I say something like no is a full sentence. No doesn't need any explanation. No is an important information for the other persons to know to make another decision. So no is important, you know. And when you find your full yes to your no, then your no becomes powerful and then you can change to maybe to a yes. So now if you ask now another person and you trust your no and you trust your yes and you ask another person, hey, can I can I touch you? Can I feel you up? Can I be with you and just have have a good time with your body? Can I can I feel you? And the other person says says yes. There are three indicators that there is no pressure or force or pushing. The first thing is you need to have a verbal yes from that person when you make that request. Yeah, you need to hear a verbal yes. The second one is you need to see their body language as a yes. You need to feel that they are welcoming and they are inviting you in. They're just like, yeah, sure, just go for it. It's open, you know. My breasts are yours. <laughs> and the third one is your gut feeling. And if one of the three is a maybe, then it's a no, then you need more information. Yeah, Your gut feeling, their body language, and their verbal answer. And then I change gears. I was wondering right now, is it the same topic when you are in a relationship? Yes. Like you said before, so basically when you when you're your girlfriend or your wife and you're, uh, I don't know, sitting or standing some, some somewhere and you come from the back because the room is the back, back way and you, you, you walk on, on your, your girlfriend uh, and you put just your hand slightly, gently on his shoulder or on, his, on her back. Are we talking about the same thing or is it like a safe space already, for example, at home? Well, the thing is, if you, if your girlfriend knows or your partner knows that you are around and you just move towards her and you put your hand on, on her shoulder, that's totally fine. If she doesn't know that you're there and she's standing at Grand Central Station and, and she, you just see her by coincidence, oh my God, this is, it's her. And you go to her and she has no idea you're there and you touch her from behind. She, I don't know, she probably... <laughs> <laughs> does an elbow or something like that what is a natural response so so from the from my understanding of the nervous system function of the of the social engagement system as social creatures we need to make eye contact so face-to-face -face engagement first before it comes to any touch so eye contact before touch and before touch you know hand connection so I just like hey you just shake your hand just like hi and then you just like you, and then hey is it okay when I yeah so it's just that, that's you know on on the social level as western civilized people I guess this is a protocol but I guess that's different in different cultures but but eye contact first is the is, is the is the 
social engagement key. Okay, so there is so much more. I and um, and I, I love this little kind of frame and container that we created here and depends on what Monday we do. We have different topics. Sometimes we talk deep about sexual things and we talk deep about um, pleasure. We, we talk deep about relationship. Sometimes we talk about work. Sometimes we share about different dynamics, uh, about spirituality. Sometimes we talk about abuse. It just depends on what people bring who coming to the Monday. And who of you is in the academy already? Who who has a who, who has a little kind of thing there? So, so this is what we mainly do when we meet on Mondays. We just actually share our humanness in this dynamic of of somatic consent. Yeah, this is not a belief system. I don't uh, have any truths uh, hired. I have just the privilege to have I don't know 15 years of experience in that realm as a professional and as a as a facilitator but I'm as well a human and I relate with my partner and I live that I, 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 I live what I teach and I, I try to walk my talk and I share my vulnerabilities and my shortcomings and where I'm fucking things up yeah so I, sh I share my humanness and this is what this space is for. So we meet every Monday at seven o'clock and we go for 90 minutes and sometimes we just two, three people and sometimes we 10. It just depends on who is interested. And we have people from all over the world um, and different cultures. And I like the diversity. There are a lot of people who have been to the dearmoring training because this is where I teach at the most in the, at the moment. But what I would like to show you is just a short little thing about the academy, what the academy is, so that you just have an idea. Do you want to see that? Is that, o is that okay that I show you that? Yeah, okay, so then I do that. I just share my screen just, just shortly. And then I give the one here who wants to be part of the ac academy a link. Yeah, or you can see, okay. So this is, I, I will give you a link in a little bit. This is the landing page, just like read through. This is who we are, this is what we do. This academy cost in a year 397 for the whole thing, everything. So I will give you a link and you go on that link and you push that button, you try for free. And then you're coming here to a page where you just need to put your name in and your credit card credentials. Sorry, apologies, I cannot bypass that. This is Mighty Network, it's very Americanized, but this is how stuff works with credit card. You're in there one month for free. If you choose to stay, um, you will be charged for one year 397. And after a month, if you see like, nah, this is not for me. I just um, rather don't want to be. You just sign out and it doesn't cost you anything. So. Okay, there's this one here. So. Okay, now you can see it, right? So. If you get the link, there is um, right now it's live stream. So what I'm saying is live right now so that other people can watch that live uh, who are in the academy. There is here when you go on home, here's on the left side. This is where all this material is. Uh, and when you hear on the home side, there is this page written here. And when you go on page, this is where you find all links sorry it doesn't work my computer is just like overdone with all the technical stuff so here you find all the links there's an onboarding call if you just would like to um, me to guide you in you have a one hour free session with me that you can book here this is the zoom link that you can come on any call any monday any wednesday hands meditation any consent lab and everything that we're doing in the academy is one Zoom link is the same link like you hear right now. You can connect with me on WhatsApp or you can send me an email. You find here on the left hand side under events, when you click there, every event like, for example, the Monday meeting that we do here right now, the hands meditation and the consent lab once a month. There is a member list and it's far away from Facebook. There is no algorithm. There is no advertising. There are just people like you and I. And 
you can connect with people here. Ask them first, of course. And then on the left hand side here, there are all the courses. So there's the foundation course where everything that we have talked today is here. There's a relationship course, the four pillars of relating. This is in German. Uh, there's a professional mastery that is not really fully done yet. This is as well existing in Spanish, in Dutch, in Portuguese. There is the orgasmic blueprint, the, uh, the videos for the couples retreat that I've done with Gary and with Hildur and other people. There will be videos that I've recorded about myself that you can watch. There's the five day challenge. And of course, you can hear the uh, book, the on onboarding call. So this is the framework of the academy and that works great on the computer on the PC and it works as well nice on the phone I just checked it so um, you have access to all this as well on the phone there is an app and you can download that so so if you're there you will find that so my invitation to you is if you would like to join and just be part of this kind of stuff then you're more than welcome and what I will do is I just send you a link and um, I sent that here in the chat to everyone and this link allows you to be in there and just look around see if that's for you if you want to join if you want to be part of that if you want to hang out come um, on this call so that includes for this 397 you know 90 minutes per week for this Monday call where you can bring your questions and your concerns and everything that you come up with uh, the hand meditation and once a month the consent lab the book is there the for some of you who don't know yet <laughs> I've published a book called orgasmic blueprint uh, where everything that we're talking about is in there so you find that there as an um, EPUB and as a PDF version that you can download and share with other people and um, uh, play the three minute game and do all this kind of stuff. So please feel free to um, push the button of that link and then leave the page open because you cannot copy a link from, from Zoom here. So leave it open and check it out. And I would like to welcome you and have uh, you join you on the, on the Monday things. This is my invitation to you to be part of that, what we do here. And I would love to see more people. And if you're part of it, you can invite every Monday, every first Monday per month, like some of you are here today, into here what we do if you have difficulties to explain people what that actually is that we do and how to use it and how to empower other people. That's my invitation is four minutes past half. So I'm a little bit over time. I apologize. And I would like to have just a few words from each one of you just to check out what's your aha, what's your takeaway, um, what's, what are you taking here with you. Either write in the chat or unmute yourself and speak it in the room as you like. Yes, please. Mm. Uh, something really important. Um, ask me permission without asking. Hmm? Mm. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> you don't always have to speak, but observe the person and uh, yeah. uh, usually this stuff will come with you. <laughs> yes. Yes, um, we are in the checkout, but I would like to say one sentence to that. And this is another mentor and teacher said that to me in the interpersonal space. When you're around people asking for permission can be something that is maybe out of the frame. And this teacher, this 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 mentor said to me, if you can't feel that I'm a yes. And you need to ask, then I will say no because you can't feel me. From an interpersonal place. Thank you. Thank you so okay, somebody else's check out. Um, I feel very 
some kind of light in your body. It's really it's like beautiful to remind myself of um, even if it's not a connection in the womb, this kind of connection is very beautiful and where we are authentic and mm. Thanks and thanks for joining today. Um, per, you were broken. Uh, uh, the internet was just, just please. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, also, also on the way to our hotspots, speaking on the phone. Um, yeah, I take away the uh, the reminder to be a part of the awareness of how when we're actually asking for something, we're having for something. Uh, the the safety and the freedom that is is made possible within that space, within that you know, constant space, and the relaxation that happens. Um, yeah, when yeah, when it's when the consent is clear, when it's mm. when it's yeah, when it's clear between mm. two people. Mm -hmm. Thanks, and I feel grateful. Mm. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Game changer for me. <laughs> what else? thank you i'm uh, here in this group for i think it's about 10 months now and i really love the teach him not and <laughs> i can't get enough of the lesson it was a really good one today i thought and i want to take the opportunity to say hi to you yay <laughs> and also to hildegund i'm so i'm so excited to see you here we just had a wonderful week in in spain and a spectacular ending and yeah <laughs> <laughs> really excited and also hey <laughs> i hope to see you all again here yeah. mm, thanks for joining today <coughs> for me can i hear that you're yeah. good though thank you yes okay um i just wanted to say i've been here also for a while and it is all always um stimulating um the ideas and uh, enlightening and I see how it's playing out in all, all of my different relationships um, which is allowing me to make different choices and um, yeah, just be more feel more empowered you know in my relationships and also um, the class that I've been working through online foundations uh, the foundations course um this really good um, very well thought out again um, lots of ideas that t just feel so relevant to me um, another thing that's happened for me is that i'm just a lot more comfortable talking about sexuality and um, just by being part of this group and in hearing um, other people's experience and um, like I feel a, a less shame around it. Mm. Mm. Thank, so you. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So you raise your hand. Uh, yes, I wanted to uh, ask for the answer to my first question at the beginning. Uh, how how not to flip out of your noticing brain and being in uh, in in the experience of enjoying? Yeah, did, did we talk about that? Did I miss it? Or uh, no, well, okay. not n n not really, not really. Apologize, but the 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 answer, the overall answer is, you do that with the object for five minutes a day, for at least a month. This is a, this is a this is a secret weapon of training your noticing brain and this muscle of being aware and bring whenever your attention is flipping around go somewhere else when you touch it you bring it straight back thinking about something bring it back to the sensation thinking about feeling something bring it back to the sensation that's what you do it just retrains your brain so basically it's just a training like you said. yes yes Presence is uh, is learnable. Oh, great! I like that. <laughs> I've been perfecting that. 
Who else? Anybody else want to check out? I think with uh, what you said in the post very beginning about uh, permission or something, uh, what I felt in my body then was like I felt so like safe and relaxed and like space, space. So it was, yeah, I would take that with me. And also the question about why do I don't ask for what I need and what's that out there and what feel like me. Yes, yeah. Okay, who haven't we heard from? Please. And then I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thanks for joining here today. Apologies for going a little bit over time. Um, I would love to see you again. Um, take advantage of this month, you know. I don't expect anybody to stay. If you resonate with what we do, then please join. And um, I would love to see you again and uh, um, have you feel, hear, seen, contributing your life into a little community. Enjoy your evening and love yourself. <laughs> Bye. Ciao for now. So, and if you like what you have seen and heard here today on this live stream, please like and subscribe. And if you would like to be part of um, this talk and sit not only on the outskirt of YouTube and watch a live, if you want to be part of this community and ask questions and join and jump in and be with us and uh, asking your questions and share your situations and where do you struggle and where can you be empowered. Um, there's a link somewhere here around the video in the description somewhere else. Please join. And as I said that already, like and subscribe. That helps the algorithm on YouTube at least. And I uh, would love to see you uh, either the next monthly Monday or to Consent Lab or to another Monday where we go really deep. All right, take care. And that's it for here today. Bye-bye.